Hello everyone, in this video we'll be walking through the one piece universal around the world string pattern. And in the video we'll be focusing mostly on the what, and then in the article we'll go maybe a little bit more philosophical and talk about the when and the why, when you would use this method, why you would use it, the advantages, the disadvantages. So I started by actually using my string measurer because I just wanted to show you kind of how much string you can actually save, um, especially if you're going off of a reel. And I cut the string at 33 feet. From there, I need to measure out my short side. I could go back through the string measurer and, and try to get roughly nine to 10 feet, but I know how long it needs to be with my arms pulls. So for me, it's like one pull and then a little bit more. Um, you actually use even a little bit less on the short side than you would with maybe a traditional one piece string job where there's no um, boxing occurring. And we'll talk about that when we um, get there in this video. But what I did was I marked off with a pen where that short side should be, where I should finish that. And I normally don't do that, but for the sake of the video, and if you're a beginner, and if you're kind of experimenting with different ways of stringing your racket, um, it's useful to maybe do that in case something goes weird. And you're going to see that it's actually a good thing that I did this because something did go a little bit weird. The string um, tangled up on itself, which one piece stringing, it, that just happens so much more. Um, I default to two piece stringing. So for me, whenever I do a one piece string job, I usually run into problems where the string tangles on itself and I waste a lot of time. Um, if you did one piece all the time, you probably wouldn't have those issues. But you can see that I'm actually pinching the string on the short side. And you know that may or may not work for you. Um, and what you're going to see here is that I do release it at some point to try to detangle the string. And then we're going to see my pen mark actually go up. We can see it right now. It's no longer down in the throat. So it was a good thing that I marked this off with pen because now I'm going to be able to go back and I can um, even it back out. So we uh, go and we bring that back around and now it's in the right place. We have our long side and our short side. And now we will go through and start our mains as we normally do. Um, I had to change the tension and stuff, but now we're back and we pull both sides of the string and this allows me to set my anchor. It allows me to also then set the uh, starting clamp on the outside of the frame. And this is just the way that I personally like starting my mains. I find that it, it damages the string the less and it seems to give me a really good final tension at the end. So we now pull that opposite side. We're gonna go and clamp that off and we'll do three on one side before coming back and doing six on the other side, just trying to keep the uh, deformation of the racket somewhat consistent as best of a job as we can. And that's one of the reasons why you would use the around the world if you are doing a one piece string job is that it's going to allow you to do your crosses from head to throat instead of from throat to head. I also should point out that to do this properly, you are going to need that starting clamp. If you don't have the starting clamp, you're gonna have to do more of a, a traditional one piece string job where when your mains finish down in the throat, you have to then start in the throat and work your way back up to the head, which um, as we talked about before, it's a little bit worse for the racket to do it that way. And the other reason why I personally think going top to bottom is beneficial whenever you can is because top to bottom is what you're used to doing. That's the way that you always do um, your, your crosses, especially if you're doing two piece string jobs. So just the way that you pull tension, the way that you straighten the string, you wanna to try to keep that um, as consistent as you can. So I believe after we go to three on this side, we are gonna make a cut and get to the end. So let me start to explain to you guys what you have to do and what you do differently. So on the short side, what you're gonna do is you're gonna string all your mains except for the last main, meaning that you are going to finish up in the head on the short side. So instead of doing that final main, you're actually going to do the top cross. And we're gonna to get to that, I believe, um, in just a second. So we're back to the long side here. And I've done the top cross, or sorry, the second to last main, and I'm now going to do the final main, and this is with the long side. Okay, so let's do the final main here on the long side. And we have to wait a little while because there's so much string to pull through. You can tell I'm not a huge fan of, of one piece string jobs just because I hate having to pass so much string through. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clamp that off. And now for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna let that go to the floor. And now we're gonna go back to the short side. So here on the short side, we're doing the second to last main. 
Okay, so this would be main number seven on a, on a 16 by 19. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clamp that off as I normally would. All right, release. And now instead of going and doing that final main, I'm going to do the top cross. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to weave that through and I'm gonna pull tension on this side. After we pull tension, this is why you need the starting clamp, we are going to hold this tension with the starting clamp on the outside of the frame. Now, also take into account the way that you're doing your weave, whether you're starting over or starting under. And in fact, it's not that important to know that at this point, um, but when you go and you do your bottom cross, that will matter. Okay, and now you're gonna get to watch me struggle a little bit. And this is why I like to leave this stuff in the video so you don't think that it goes perfect every time. Um, I was having a hard time passing that string through. And so I went ahead and I, I cut out a sharper edge and you never wanna jam the string. So if I'm really starting to put pressure and it's not coming through, I'm gonna come up with a different solution. And um, this time making that tighter little edge worked out for me. So here we go, we're pulling tension. You can see that I measured my short side just about right. We almost didn't make it. Now, there is a method that you could still get there, and I think that might be what the next video is gonna be on. That's gonna be creating a bridge using um, the starting clamp, but that's beyond the scope here. So that's now being held out, and now we're gonna come down to the bottom, and we are going to do the final cross on the long side. Now, on a 16 by 19 pattern, to guarantee that you know, you're getting the proper sort of basket weave, um, and you know one side's over, then the next cross it starts under, the next side over, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. On 16 by 19, you want it to be the same. On 18 by 20, you want it to be different. Now, at the end of the day, is it the end of the world if you accidentally had two going the same way? If it's your own racket, I would say no. If it's a client's racket, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and, and start over. That just doesn't look very good. In terms of playability though, um, as far as I know, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So again, make sure that you check, make sure that if you started over, um, you know, you just kind of bring your finger down that main and then make sure that you're also going over on that bottom one. Now, after we do the bottom cross, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our final main. So we're gonna come back up and we're gonna finish the main. So pull this string all the way through and we're actually going to use that same clamp that's down there in the bottom. Okay, so you never wanna have a clamp going like across the racket. It won't work anyway, but um, just in case. So one thing you might wanna do different to what I did was I got that really, really close to the frame, which could be a problem because now we're having to do our traditional crosses. Okay, and what you'll see is that I kind of struggle. There's very little room here, and that was an error on my part. It's enough room, but we definitely probably would want more. So now I'm gonna do my crosses as I normally would. Obviously now we want them to be um, countering. You know, if, if we see the one above it that's over, we want it to be under this time. And we're really basically in our normal position where we would be um, for stringing a racket. The thing I am gonna do a little bit different is I'm not gonna go to one ahead really quickly. Um, I do want to kind of have my clamps in more of a traditional place before I start doing my one ahead on my crosses here. So I am going to pull tension right away. All right. And then we're going to have to grab that clamp that's down there in the bottom and we're going to pull that one up. All right. So we've pulled tension and we clamp off as per usual. And now we actually could remove that clamp that's holding in the main at this point. For whatever reason, I don't release it until I get over by that clamp, but you could let it go now. It's actually being held in very similar to the way that we have our crosses held when we're doing a traditional um, two-piece starting clamp method. Okay, so we're gonna come through. And really, there's not too much more to discuss at this point. You can just watch me struggle doing my weaving. Um, in my defense, and this is definitely an excuse, in my defense, I uh, had just kind of uh, lubricated um, my clamps in my machine a little bit before doing this video. <laughs> so of course my hands are a little bit slick and that makes this a little bit harder. Um, and that also goes to when you're doing a one piece around the world, there are certain strings that behave much nicer for this than others. And you can see I'm now doing my uh, one ahead method here. 
And for example, a um, polyester string, and I think it was Genesis Spinex, and it was coming off of a reel. I used that recently on a one piece around the world, and it was such a pain in the butt because that string kept wanting to tangle on itself. And in hindsight, I really wish I had just done, done two piece on that because it would have made my life a lot easier. Um, but in the article, I think we will talk a little bit more about when and why you might want to use this method. Um, one of the big things is it saves a lot of string. A lot of people are going to argue that you're going to have a higher dynamic tension um, at the end of the day. Things like that are the reason. All right, so we go ahead, we release. I think we're getting to another cut pretty soon. I think I just want to show you guys my normal... Um, method here for how I kind of release everything. So when you get down to the fourth cross and you're going to be pulling tension on the fourth cross, that is when it is time to return to the top. So um, after you do and you pull tension on three crosses, that's when you come back to the starting clamp and you uh, pull tension there and then you tie off. So we're about to see our first knot. All right, let's come through. And this is again, um, just that little one ahead method that you see a lot of people use, but I'm not going to pull tension down here. I'm going to go back up to the starting clamp and I grab my string. We pull tension here. Life is good. We release the clamp that's right below it. We bring it up one position. And now again, this is just making it very consistent for where we're holding our string. So there's never a time where we're asking, you know, one clamp to, to hold a ton of tension. And that's kind of the reason why after um, that number of crosses, you come back up to the top. So in these videos, we're always just using that double half hitch. Um, we could get fancy, but this is just such an easy one to illustrate and it works just fine. When you're pulling your knots, um, one thing to be careful of, and I don't know how much I've talked about this is, you don't wanna pull them like insanely tight. So when you're using the starting clamp as I'm using to cinch up my knot, it's easy to overdo it. And I am probably even overdoing a little bit. You can see my machine kind of rocking a little bit. Um, be a little bit careful that you don't pull them too, too tight. Sometimes that can lead to a, a premature break of the strings. Not common, but it can certainly happen. We've come back down now to the fourth cross and we bring ourselves down. And now all we have to do is get all the way back down to the bottom. So I'm pretty sure the video is gonna skip ahead here in a second, and we're gonna be down to the last few uh, crosses to do. I don't know why I left the video running for this long at this point, but whatever. Again, you can just enjoy watching me try to weave some crosses here and, and struggle with it. Okay, and we've obviously skipped ahead a little bit. And I think at this point, I stopped doing the one ahead. At a certain point, you just don't really need to anymore. It's not really giving you any great benefit. You know, most of the tension has already been pulled here. And you're working with uh, such a confined space at the bottom as well. It's usually just easier to uh, go ahead and now do these one at a time. And here's where it gets a little bit interesting. It doesn't really change in any way, but you do have to be watching very carefully when you get down to that bottom to last cross to make sure that nothing has gone wrong with your weaving, with your patterns, that you are um, still alternating over to under, over to under with that first little weave that you're doing. And as long as you do what I said earlier, where when you have a 16 by 19, your top and your bottom cross are following the same pattern or on 18 by 20 that it's the opposite pattern then you're going to be absolutely fine um, but it, it, it can it can be easy to not think about that at the time so just something to uh, be aware of here and we're about done here you're going to see that i think i pull the tension on the outside of that holder which as you can see the string is going around the holder with certain types of string, I would be much more cautious. Um, if I was using certain multi-filaments or I was using natural gut, I would be more careful and I would actually run the string you know, out and around the other direction. So that's not pushing against that. Uh, I've never personally found it to have any real issue, uh, mainly because it's just not that different to the way that you're running the string around that header. But it is something to be aware of and something some of you might have looked at and been like, oh my gosh, you just let it run around the uh, the holder there on the outside. Not that big of a deal, um, especially here with this, this cheap little synthetic gut. Uh, but anyway, we're getting down towards the end. So I'm using a starting clamp to help me get the string through. Let's get it out of there. And we pull through. 
And now this is the cool part because um, normally when you're stringing a two piece, you don't really have that much flexibility with where you do your tie off. Whereas here, you will have a little bit of flexibility with, with a lot of rackets. Now, um, I typically just tie off where the main would be, unless it's a really, really far distance. So in this example, um, I think I just kind of show you that I could potentially stick this string in maybe a couple different locations to finish things off, but I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna put it into that main location. This is normally where you tie off your mains. You can see that the string is being tied off on the uh, same side, so it's, it's two knots on the same side. And I'm just again gonna use my regular um, double half hitch here and we'll be done with the racket. So that is a universal around the world. Again, the way that this works is when you get down to your final mains on the short side, instead of doing the final main, you do the top cross. And then on the long side, you do the bottom cross followed by the uh, final main before continuing on and doing your crosses as usual. So in the article that's going to accompany this, we will talk a little bit more about the why you're going to use this method, what are some of the advantages, what are some of uh, the disadvantages. And yeah, so go over to the website to check that out. I'm just checking to make sure I nailed it before I release it. And yeah, hopefully you guys will hear from me again um, another video relatively soon. Hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy. Take care.